Hey folks, this is Michael Knapp with The Well Church down in Santa Rosa Beach. I'm, it's been a really awesome week. Over and over again, God has been showing me what it really means to be in Christ. And he's given me all these scripture verses and analogies and pictures of what this means. And it's really helped me deal with a lot of the chaos that's going on in the, with the world around us. I'm going to share a couple analogies. I was, I was uh, talking to a friend of mine about this, and he said, man, it's interesting you're saying that because the same thing's been happening to me. God has just been showing me over and over of what it means right now to be in Christ and Him and us. Now, in the New Testament, this concept of being in Christ is mentioned about a thousand times. I think it's 27 times just in the, in the book of Ephesians alone. And so what does this really mean? So he shared with me this really cool analogy that God gave him. He said there was, he saw this vision of a guy that was walking through a minefield and he just had this peace and this joy and all these bombs going all on all around him. And the guy was smiling and happy. And he said that, he said that was a picture of what God was speaking to him about being in Christ. Well, it was funny he, I, when he said that, I said, man, you're not gonna believe this. I said, Two or three different times this week, God's given me a similar analogy. We we have a 15-month-old along with five other kids, and she was a late walker. She just started walking this week, and it's just so cute to watch her walk around and carry her little teddy bears or whatever. Well, um, Sunday night, we had a friend over, and he's about 25 years old, and he's really good with kids, and they got in this big pillow fight, and, and, and they were just all over the house and pounding each other with pillows and I mean, it was a war. I mean, it was absolutely war. These, I mean, he, it, there was no mercy at all in, in this pillow fight. And all of a sudden I look and this little 15 month old who's just learning to uh, walk is wobbling over there, giggling. And you could tell she just wanted to be part of the gang and, and they're still fighting. And I'm going, oh great, she's in the middle of all this. And I tried to run over there and they said, no, we'll watch her. Well, they're they're fighting all around her and she's giggling and and, and laughing and I got the biggest kick out of it. And then this was really cool. The Lord said, that's what it means to be in Christ. And, and, and I said, what do you mean? He said, see the joy that she has in the middle of the chaos that's going on around her. And I said, yeah, he said, that's a picture of my relationship with you. He said, because I'm in you and you're in me, the world can be spinning apart all the way around you and, and it can be total chaos, but there's joy in the middle of it. And I thought, wow, it, it, it's so true. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to read some scriptures. I'm just going to read a handful uh, of them about this concept of being in Christ because I really want us to grasp this. Uh, 2 Corinthians says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. That's one of the awesome things about being a, what's quote unquote, a born again believer is that you you, the, your past life, your past sins, your past struggles, your past fears, your past, that's all gone. And you've got this new life in Christ and he replaces all that with, with, with him ultimately. It's so beautiful. So that's number one. Number two, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave right to become children of God. You know, I've had a lot of people over the years of ministry that have said, man, I grew up with a really bad past. My parents were bad. My my brothers and so we had just an awful past and i'm like man you you're you're you that's no longer your identity your identity changes literally it, it changes you become a new citizen and you're adopted into the kingdom of god and there, there's a birthright that that gets transferred and and you're now children of the king and man imagine that imagine you were this poverty stricken servant in some kingdom and the king comes to you and says and you're a you're a orphan and he comes into the orphanage or whatever and he says no you're now my child and takes you out of that poverty stricken orphanage and makes you a child of the king guys that's what it means to be in christ we're a child of the king we've been adopted Woo! it's good stuff galatians 2 i've been crucified with christ it's no longer i who live but christ lives in me and the and the life i now live in the flesh i live by faith in the son of god who loved himself and gave himself up for me good stuff um Another one, Romans 8, 1, therefore there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So man, I have a tendency when I screw up to just beat myself up all the time. And man, when you're in Christ, there's no condemnation. Uh, I'm going to read some other, just um, just six things of what it means to, actually it's like seven or eight things. Uh, in Christ, we're adopted in God's family, which I already said, Ephesians 1. We're made children of God with Jesus Christ, not only our Lord and Savior, but our elder brother, Romans 8, 29. In Christ, we're accepted by God. You know, as a, as a young teenage boy, 
I always dealt with the struggle. I was always afraid of dying because I had this heart issue and, and I, I knew I was a sinner. I knew I had fallen short of God's glory and I was always afraid because that God wouldn't accept me as a child. Well, guys, that's why Jesus died on the cross to wipe us away our sins so that we can be a child of God. So we're accepted. Don't beat yourself up anymore about your sins. We're accepted by God, Ephesians 1, 7. In Christ, the, we experience the eternal and unbreakable love of God, Romans 8. In Christ, we experience the peace of God, which transcends all understanding and guards our hearts and minds. Guys, I, I'm looking at this world that's going on around me right now, and I don't know why here we're four or five weeks into hearing about it and knowing a lot about it, and I have more peace now than I've ever had. And because I know that the world doesn't offer me peace and security, only he can. So we can have a peace that transcends all understanding, Philippians 4, 7 through 9. In Christ, God has promised to meet all of our needs, both material and, and spiritual, Philippians 4, 11 through 13, 2 Peter. Let me read a couple of those. Let's see if I, I can click these real quick. Um, that's just loading slowly. Um, the reference doesn't load really quick. I probably could have pulled it up. But anyway... You know, when we're in Christ and we're following his will, I, I shared this testimony. One of these days, I need to write a book about it. God called my wife and I to do a Christian coffee shop, and we had no money at the time and no real job. I was doing some leadership training, and I had some rental income coming in, but there was not enough money to make it. And for two years, God called us to do this ministry, and literally daily, we the ministry never made any money for two solid years, but for whatever reason, every time a bill would come, money would randomly show up. Bill, random money, bill, random money. And, and it was daily. And it was a, a matter of just surrendering to the will of the Father daily and, and just being obedient to Him. But it's, man, it's not that, hey, I can go out and spend this money and then God will meet my needs. No, we have to trust daily that 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 we're in Him and we're following His will, okay? Uh, I shared the story of Noah Noah's Ark. You know, one of the reasons, you know, the Ark didn't have a rudder. Uh, he had to trust, Noah had to trust that God was going to take him where he needed to be and surrender to that. Sometimes we need to do that. Uh, in Christ, we're justified and sanctified in the sight of God. We've had our sins imputed to Christ, and Christ's righteousness is imputed to us. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 Peter 2, Romans 5. This is a double exchange where Christ voluntarily suffered for our sins and clothed us in his righteousness. This is the basis for the forgiveness of our sins before our holy God. In Christ, we belong to the church, which is referred to in Scripture as the body of Christ. Those who are in Christ are united to one another. Our union with Christ is the basis for our unity among believers. We're living stones brought together to make up a spiritual house. Here's my challenge. If you're not plugged into a church, and it's hard right now because it's all online stuff and you can't meet publicly, but man, I know a lot of people. I've had a lot of people come to me over the years and just say, man, I don't have any family. I don't have any friends. My work atmosphere is rough. Man, participate in a church body. There's some joy. I love that I can literally go to Uganda or Mexico or England and find another believer in Christ. Some of my best friends are friends from all over the world that I don't even really haven't spent many years with, but because we're in Christ, we have a bond that is amazing. It's just so intense. I love it. Um, number eight, in Christ, we share the benefits of life, death, and resurrection and ascension. And that's what's going to amazing, guys, is we're, we get we get to be with our Father. Um, uh, because Christ rose, we will also rise from the dead. Not only are we recipients of Christ's life and righteous, righteousness, but we've been freed from the power of um, sin and death. Man, I remember what it was like to, to, to not have a relationship with Christ and be fearful of that. But man, we've been free to that. In Christ, we've been made alive to God, have been made new creatures with spiritual natures. In Christ, we're progressively transformed into him, His image and likeness. Finally, in Christ, we eagerly anticipate receiving glorified, resurrected bodies and reigning with Him forever in the new heavens and the new earth. Now, these are just a handful of passages about what it means to be in Christ. And one of my favorite concepts in this passage is that that we are, we're now citizens of the kingdom of heaven. When we receive Christ, our citizenship changes. It says in him, uh, you're included with Christ. When you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and that gospel is that Jesus died for you. He paid for your sins so that you could have everlasting life. And believing that, having received that, it says, having received, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, which is a promised Holy Spirit, which is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. Folks, I love that in the middle of all this chaos that I am in Christ and that I can, I can literally be like the guy that walks through the storm. 
or walks through the minefield and be like, I'm good. I'm good because, because I'm in Christ and I know he's my provider. He's my protector. He will sustain me. Uh, as long as I do his will, I'm in it. So my challenge for you, if you're not in Christ, get in Christ. It is a, it's a peaceful place to be in the middle of this chaos um, and surrender to his will uh, and just do whatever God calls you to do. And um, so anyway, my prayer is to, to take time, go online, just Google what it means to be in Christ and look at all the passages and just daily repeat those passages over and over and over again. Thanks so much for watching. It's Michael Knapp with The Well Church. If you need prayer, please email me at thewellchurchfl uh, at gmail.com. That's wellchurchfl at gmail.com. Or if you um, just want to check out some other videos, uh, it's thewellchurchfl.com, thewellchurchfl.com. And our Saturdays, we're not having services right now except for a live broadcast Saturday nights at 6.30 on Facebook, my personal Facebook page. Um, it's Michael Knapp, K-N-A-P-P, so you can find that in Santa Rosa Beach. Uh, look forward to hearing from you. Please message me, uh, email me or whatever, and love to pray for you or um, be with, be a blessing to you however, however we know how or however, however I can. Thanks so much and God bless.